Brethren, I take this opportunity to greet you this evening. Praise God. I wish to welcome those of you present here and those watching from home uh, to this Wednesday, which is our midweek fellowship, and which also falls on the Ash Wednesday as per the Lent calendar of the church. But before we start our service, I wish us to go before the Lord with a word of prayer. Our everlasting Father, we bow before you. We thank you for your grace and for your mercies. Thank you for your love that you have uh, bestowed upon us all and that you have forgiven us our sins and given us also an opportunity to gather here again to hear from you so that you can uh, sharpen our mind to understand your deeper love for us in this world. We appreciate for the opportunity that you have given everyone that is watching and even those that are here because of your grace that each one of them may get a portion of this blessing or our blessing. Father Lord, we adore you for the great things that you continue doing in our lives, things that you have already done that, and things that you, are, you, you did even in the past. We honor you because of the opportunity. We honor you because of the moment. Thank you for the word that we are going to read this evening. As we expound on it, that, Lord, we may understand the deeper meanings for your love for us also. We love you and we appreciate you because of the great things you have done and what you are going to accomplish today in our lives. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, as I said, today is the Ash Wednesday. And as usual, Christians gather to celebrate this day or to mark this day, and we are here today as Christians, to mark it by doing a fellowship of love together. Our theme for this service is reconciliation. And our text, guiding text, is going to come from the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 5, verse number 20b, then also we read chapter number 6 of the same book, verse number 10. And this is what the Bible says. So, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to God. Then we skip that one and read chapter 6, verse number 10, which says, Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. We are poor, but we give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, yet we have everything. When we talk about reconciliation, we cannot ignore to discuss about forgiveness. Because in our normal lives, we get offended every day and in every moment. If we do a review of a single day of our lives, it will tell you, for instance, whether you have been wronged or indeed you have wronged others. So we are offended every other moment with the small things, with the people, with the situations, and these things sometimes they spoil our moments. For instance, if you looked at a single day, early morning when you brought your matatu to work, and someone has stepped on your clean shoe, it offends you. Someone may have even splashed you with some dirt on your special garment and on your way to work, and especially when you are rushing to an appointment. All these things, and even people who have obstructed you while you are driving to the place of work, even when you are at the right of way. All these people, 
may start offending us in the morning and we may end offended even late in the evening. We get pissed off more often because of such things. They also happen even with our family members when they offend us, our close relatives, when our close friends offend us. And it happens many times. But when there is a sign of remorsefulness from the person who has offended you, and usually when they post forward a word of sorry, it heals our hearts. But again, even when they say sorry, we have a responsibility as people who have been wronged to accept the sorry, to accept the advancement of that forgiveness. Then it should be our motivation as Christians all the time and always to agree to seek for forgiveness and also to forgive those who wrong us. One instance in our country, Kenya, after 2017 elections, which were hotly contested leading to a fallout in the country, the sitting president and the former prime minister took a step of doing a handshake. That stretching of hands to forgive each other and bury the hatchet to say, let bygones be bygones, then we move on, was a great sign for Christians, was a great move as an, a lesson for everyone that watched those things happen. Because everyone had lost hope and thought there was no more hope in uniting Kenya. Though politics has come in, but we know there was a sign of a handshake that brought things cool down than they were that time. Then now, even before we discuss further, it is also good to understand what reconciliation is and what forgiveness is. Reconciliation may be defined as bringing two parties that have been estranged or two people that have been estranged together again in friendship. The same way the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 10 records, which says, while we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Our relationships are usually horizontal and vertical in nature. We live well with our neighbors before we relate well with our God. So reconciliation cannot happen without forgiveness. There is a responsibility of both parties, the offender and the offended, to agree so that a reconciliation can take place. What is forgiveness? We are saying forgiveness also, on the other hand, is the conscious or deliberate decision one makes to hold the person who wronged them condemnable for the sin they have committed against them. So it is a deliberate action and it is not coerced or forced on anyone. It means you pardon or you forgive the debt that is owed to you as a result of the sin to you by the other person. If anything, it is God who forgave and forgives even now more than any other. He is the only best example through Jesus Christ, God the Son, which is showed many instances of also forgiving and also healing and even blessing many people even when they wronged. Seeking forgiveness 
is not weakness. Seeking reconciliation does not mean one is vulnerable to attacks. But then what does the scripture say? When we read the book of uh, Matthew, chapter number 6, about the Sermon on the mountain, about the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the mountain, Jesus Christ spoke about peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. And they kept on saying, Blessed are those who are pure in heart. Because how can we be causing of having pure hearts if you have not forgiven or if you have not reconciled with others? But often we get these processes confused when we combine forgiveness and the uh, and the reconciliation. We all know that the Lord would have, would have us not only forgive, but also to be reconciled. The scripture tonight, which was our guiding scripture, calls us more to reconcile with God. But again, it will not be possible to reconcile with God before we reconcile with the people we live with. Because why God is inviting us to be reconciled with him? It is because he made his only begotten son. Only begotten son to be made sin. A son who was blameless to be made sin so that we could be counted righteous before his eyes. And so God invites us to come back to him. Though we have wandered and have gone away from his grace, God keeps inviting us to come back to him. It is Jesus, even as he went to be crucified, even as he was on the cross, he still forgave those who wronged him. He had the ability to refuse to forgive. But even when he was in pain on the cross, he still insisted, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. How big is it for us to forgive others when they wrong us? Now, forgiveness is the responsibility of the one who has been offended. Because you can ask for forgiveness and they don't forgive you. So they have a responsibility to accept. And that's why I started by saying it is possible to be forgiven but not to be reconciled. And so, reconciliation has to work together with forgiveness to make it a complete process. Forgiveness is not about you giving up the heart that you feel as a result of the sin. Forgiveness is not about you say that that heart doesn't matter. Forgiveness means you pardon or you cancel the debt that is all as a result of the sin. And this is the great gift that God himself considered for all human beings. All of us that were counted sinners, that he gave a sacrifice of his son. Such that his son became a bond for the relationship that have been, had been broken. Moses tried to reconcile his brothers who were fighting. In the book of Acts chapter number 7 verse 26 says he tried to reconcile them in peace and asked why do you injure one another? Because the event today will follow other events in this season of Lent, even including washing of brethren his, hand, his, his feet. Then what does that one teach us? 
accepting to humble before each other as a sign of humility before God. Both forgiveness and reconciliation are made possible by the sacrifice of Christ. None of it can work without the other. And uh, as Jesus was teaching his disciples on the mountain, in the book of Matthew, chapter number 6, verse number 14, the Bible says, If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you, re you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. So it is a two-way. And that's why I started by saying, we live well with our neighbors. That is what we call the horizontal relationship, man to man, before enjoying the vertical relationship that is man to God. Because God desires, as we do our Lord's Prayer, where we say, our Father who art in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. For thy is thy kingdom, thy power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. So forgiving others is a responsibility we have for us to achieve the reconciliation. And this is what God has done. First, he has forgiven us. So it is the responsibility of each one of us as Christians, first, to accept that the forgiveness has been granted. Number two, we will carry that forgiveness together as we go before the Lord to ask for reconciliation because God looks at us and wonders why we have wandered away from Islam and is calling us, is inviting us back and is telling us, reconcile with me. Praise be to God. Now, at times we feel we have the right of way because we believe we are always right in our own understanding. And so we put conditions to people who wrong us. Sometimes people ask for big and huge compensations for the evils that have been done unto them from their offenders. But this is not the example of Jesus Christ. This is not the example of God. If God was to judge us against the laws of his only son on the cross, no human being could have achieved to come close even to God because the death or the cost would be too huge. So it is Christ who bought us. And through this example, as the Bible says, how many times are we supposed to forgive each other? Seven times seven. That is many times. Didn't you hear a story, the parable that Jesus Christ taught his disciples about one master who sent his servant to go to his vineyard to see how it was faring and the workers at the vineyard killed the first servant? He didn't lose hope. He still sent another one. And the workers at the vineyard also killed him. But he never got tired again until he sent his own son. And they still killed him. But he still loved the workers. That is the same love God conveys to us this evening. That his hands are open, his heart is wide open for everyone as he comes, that we may reconcile with him, even this season of Lent, 
as we move step by step, watching the calendar of the church keenly in prayer and fasting. First, we must deny ourselves to please God, even in reconciliation, to please God, even in forgiveness. Number two, we must be humble to be of use. We must be peacemakers where there is trouble that we may move again to make peace with others. And this one is what will please God so that he may release his blessings unto us. I believe wherever you are, you have a question in your mind, you are asking yourself, what would I do with that brother who moved my beacon for the shamba that I bought? Well, you are wondering, what will I do with that man who has run away with my monies? What will I do with that man who has stolen my property? What will I do with that man who killed my son, with that person who killed my children, with that person who hit me with a motorbike and ran away? with that person who splashed me with that in the morning, with that person who pushed me even when we were queuing in the bank and he never said so. Brethren, I want to encourage you that we must open our hearts this evening to allow the love of God to control our emotions so that we may first release that forgiveness to please God. Because if we don't do that commitment as Christians, then we should not expect to be forgiven by our God. We are also sinners. The Bible says we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But God has not encouraged us to live in sin. He is inviting us back to reconcile with him so that we may also fit in the church that he has assembled for his second coming. So you may be wondering, what will you do? At times, people wonder and some imagine that if they take the first step, they will be seen as weak people. Even to stretch the hand of forgiveness, people may think that that is a sign of weakness. Or if they stretch the first hand for reconciliation, they may think that they have been vulnerable, they have been exposed. But that is brevity. And I would encourage anyone tonight that going forward, it is not shame, it is not shameful, it is not rude, it is not cheap to go forward to seek forgiveness. It is not cheap to go forward and reconcile with those we feel we must reconcile. Because we are in a season, a period of problems, even when Corona is here, we want to believe that it is only God who has been gracious to us. No human being has been able to control us. No human being has been able to take care of us except God himself. And therefore, this evening, as we wind up the service, I want to say this in conclusion, that uh, both forgiveness and reconciliation are very hard processes. And it's only the brave that can take them head on. There are also hearts or pains to be carried along as we achieve reconciliation and forgiveness. There are also emotions to be processed. And so we must know how to regret our emotions as Christians. There will be fresh wounds to be healed. And so we must be keen not to touch those wounds. And that finally, Christ has died to make it all possible. Praise be to God. Christ has died to make it possible. And this should be a blessing to, to, be, to be, be a blessing to every one of us this evening that we are forgiven and we must also seek to forgive and reconcile. More so, being reconciled to God, because God carries our lives, God carries our situations, God carries our hope, and He carries our destiny for the future that we are looking forward to.
So I want to believe that wherever you are this evening, you are healed. Those pains that you have carried all around, that they may go by the grace of God, that they may be lightened by the grace of God through the sacrifice of his son on the cross, who shed his blood to cover us all. And the more so, when we forgive, that we may also learn to forget so that we may please God rather than having those fresh wounds coming up or popping up every time we remain. Finally, I want us to make a prayer of faith that it has been a burden in your heart that again God will make it possible for you to live in peace and in harmony with the society and the people you need. We need to face the hard facts. No ifs and no buts can make this succeed. Accept personal responsibility for whatever harm we have caused. Forgive and in humility work to build trust through Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father and our King in heaven, you gave more. Nothing can be compared with what you gave when you gave your son on the cross. Even if all people in this universe combined their efforts, they cannot match your sacrifice that you gave for your son. This was to achieve the reconciliation between you and us human beings having fallen short of thy glory and sinned terribly that you invited us back and we are in this season marking these processes and these stages of the Lent season coming back to you in reference and also hope and trembling so that God you may lift our souls up Father, we look at you for your love. We have challenges. Some situations are too hard. Some steps are too difficult for each one of us. But we, when we come to you, oh God, we, we find reprieve. So, oh God, I will invite unto our situations this evening that you may search our hearts, that you may understand our deep, desires. You may understand our hopes. You may understand our trust. You may understand our petrols and bring us back to yourself. Father, this will make us also move on with the comfort and with the peace of mind as we serve even the ministry that Lord, all people that are listening, that they may also find favor this evening, that they may find peace that they may find harmony in their hearts. We bless you and we worship you because you are precious. Those who are sick at home, we pray for your healing. Those hospitalized and uh, uh, in pain, God, we want to invite your love unto them, that they may recover and we rejoice together. We invite your love also unto everyone that has a special need. In between now and another time when we meet God, that people may have a testimony to say thank you. More so, the burden of forgiveness, those who have that burden in their hearts, that they may release it to you, O oh God, because you are faithful. We love you and we appreciate for your grace, we appreciate for your care, we appreciate for your, uh, for your goodness and for your mercies that endures forever. Bless us even as we disperse to our various homes. Bless us and remind us to be thankful all the time because of the things you do in our lives. We love you and we appreciate you. For this we pray and trust in Jesus' name. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.